Hey everyone, thanks for joining Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and today I'm going to be playing through a brand new game on Kickstarter called Freedom 5. This is a new one from Arcane Wonders. It is a 1 to 5 player game that takes roughly 1 to 2 hours to play. It is a fully cooperative game where all the players are working together to defeat the game itself. In this video, I'll be playing through the game, showing you the first, middle, and end few turns, showing you how the game plays and progresses to help you decide whether or not this is one you want to back on Kickstarter. If you're just interested in checking out an overview, I'll have a link up in the top corner where I'll go through some of the main features of the game and show you a sample round. As always, if you find these videos helpful, if you like what I do, please consider that like button subscribe to my channel. It's one of the easiest ways you can support channels like mine so we can continue to grow and produce this content. If you want to stay updated on all my videos, also considering that bell so you get notifications anytime I release new videos. So let's head to the table. We'll see how this one plays. Before getting into the game, there's a couple of things I want to cover real quick. So first off, all the materials you see here are prototype materials and are subject to change and will look a lot better in the final production copy. They're also still fine-tuning some of the rules, so some of them might change slightly from the ones that I'm going to be covering in this video. So if you're watching this down the road, once the game is produced, I will be doing a full teaching video for it at that point. So make sure you're checking for that video versus watching this one for rules. From there, the other important thing that I want to cover is that this is a massive game. So there is some more stuff that I have off the side, such as all the villain cards and the masterminds card and that. And I'll have those popping up on the screen as we reference those. I'll also be covering the comic book that we'll be playing. And with this one, this is scenario one. And again, this is still a prototype as well. And they are fine tuning some of the things in here for balance and whatnot. So from there, let's get into it. And each one of these comics is going to have a story along with it to kind of introduce our characters and so that we can see what's going on and what the motives are for the mastermind that's playing, which is the overall villain. There's going to be the mastermind, who is the architect of all this. This is the guy we're trying to bring down. And then he also has villains that are out there that are going to be sowing all kinds of mischief and mayhem to kind of keep our heroes busy along the way. From there, I want to cover the introduction real quick to set the mood. So with this one, this is about Ivan Raminatz, the son of a prolific USSR weapons developer. He grew up in Lithuania during the Cold War, and when the United States sent a team of superhumans led by the world's first legacy to disrupt the creation of the Soviet Doomsday device, the resulting conflict left young Ivan an orphan. Years of fending for himself and picking up the pieces of his father's work warped Ivan into a cold-hearted, power-hungry dictator known as Baron Blade. Eventually, his quest for vengeance brought him to Megalopolis, where he, was, where he suffered a number of defeats at the hands of the Freedom Five. While the nature of their feud has escalated over the years, one thing remains constant. The Baron's obsession for revenge against the Parsons family and his hatred for America's beloved legacy. Now, after finally perfecting his father's designs, the Baron just needs to siphon a little more power from the city before he is ready to reveal his Terra Lunar Beam Cannon, a machine capable of pulling the moon from the Earth's orbit and bringing his story to a cataclysmic conclusion. So with this one, from there, then it gives you a little bit more, as you can see here. And then we'll move on. They have a special setup for the scenario, which I've already taken care of. And then on the back end, it introduces the three different villains that are going to be used in this as well, which we have Fright Train, Glamour, and Ambuscade in here. Then there's a little bit more setup that you'll follow. And then finally, we're going to move on to Chapter 1, The Ransom. Leg Legacy is bested every challenge I've thrown at him. He is, in essence, indestructible. His precious planet, however, is not. And I will rip the moon from the orbit unless I am given Paul Parsons himself. So that sets the mood for this first chapter. And so each at the end of each of the hero's phases, there's going to be a villain phase. And they're going to handle certain effects where, first off, each hero will get to draw two ability cards at the end of their turn. And then you're also going to draw and resolve a scheme card. Now, there's also going to be mastermind tokens out there. And when we pull one of those we will resolve the effects on here based on the number that's drawn. Now there's a couple of other important special rules that are in play with this one. Each villain standee token that is, that is taken as a reward for defeating the villain may be spent in combat with Baron Blade to inflict two auto damage. So that's going to be key to bringing him down. 
Then we also have justice cards. Each justice card in your reward pile may be spent to gain one die against any villain or Baron Blade in combat. And finally, we have the Seeds of Chaos. Each time a Mastermind token is placed in the city, we're also going to add one Anarchy token of any color to that location as well. So we're going to have all kinds of fun stuff popping up for us. From there, then, we're ready to move into the game, and we'll go ahead and choose by starting out with any of the heroes that we want to, unless Legacy is included in the game, in which case in Legacy you'll always be the first hero to go. So I'm going to go ahead and move into his turn, and each hero during their turn has five action tokens that they can spend to do a variety of different actions that are listed on the side of their card. Each one of these has an icon that'll list whether the hero must be in their personal life states or their hero states, and each one of the icons will be listed in the top of the card as well. So, and then each side of it, also the hero has a special ability that you can take care of. So let's go ahead and move into Legacy's turn so I can show you how this works a little bit better. So the first thing I want to do is it says once per turn I may look at the top scheme card and you may discard it or place it back on the deck on top of the deck. So I'm going to go ahead and do that first. So I'm going to look at the top scheme card and with this one it says and I would follow this at the end of his turn so this will give me a good idea of whether or not this is a good one for me to heat keep or to discard. So with this one I would add one yellow villain here or one yellow henchman here and a bystander token. Then I would add two red to number 18, and then I would add one green henchman to location 24. And if there are three henchmen there, then I would move the green villain to that location. So this one overall is not bad. It's not going to cause any overruns, which I'll cover a little bit more later on what that is, but it's definitely not a good thing. And then finally, at the bottom of the card, it, it there's rapid healing. So each hero may heal one damage or draw an ability card. So this is actually a pretty good one for us to hold on to. So I'm going to place that face down on that deck, and I'll resolve that later. From there, the only other actions that I can do in my personal life, I can heal. I could move if I wanted to move anywhere, and I can do some training or personal tasks. Right now, I don't have any personal tasks out. I will do a train action, though. So I'm going to spend an action to do that and a train action allows me at the freedom tower which i'm currently on i can draw three abilities or ability cards and i can do this once per turn so i'm going to go ahead and draw those as these are going to be handy for me to have and i have another inspiring presence i have an another flight and i have fortitude all right so from there then i am going to I will go ahead and do a move action, and I am going to move one, two, actually, no, yeah, I'm going to do that. So I'm going to move here, and then I'm going to do another move action to move down into the port, and from there I'm going to go ahead and flip over to my hero side so that I can start doing some actions there. And I'm going to do an attack action against the henchmen in this location. So in order to do that again, I have to spend another token, and then I'm gonna gather up a number of dice, one for each henchman that's in the game. So I have three reds, and then with Legacy, he also adds a white die anytime he makes dice rolls. From there, then I'm gonna consult my chart, or my stats on the side here, and based on the color that I'm rolling for is the number I have to roll equal to or greater than to score a hit or be successful. So with the body check, I have to roll a three or higher on each die in order to do a damage to a henchman. So let's go ahead and give these a roll and see what happens. Not too bad. I got three successes, two on my reds and one on my whites. So I get to eliminate all three of these henchmen. Now I also have a a justice card that I'm going after where I'm going to I need to get one of each of the henchmen that's out there the each, uh, different colors so I'll get to add one there and I will also so that is it for that action and then I am going to I think I will also try to handle that anarchy token there so I'm going to go ahead and spend my last action to do that and with that one, I am going to draw a matching Anarchy card of that color. So I need to draw a red. And so there's the red. And with this one, it says, The fire rages on in a nearby building. 
Desperate screams for help can be heard from those trapped inside. So I'm going to roll five dice for the test. So I get my three reds here, and I do have some extra here. These, uh, these are not dice that are included in the game as well. I want to point that out. These are my own dice, and I just find it a little bit better to, or a little bit more fun to roll all the same color. But in the game, you will just simply add additional color dice to it, and it'll count for the same. And then he is going to also add his die as well. And we're looking for successes on this. The more we get, the better the result. So let's go ahead and roll and see what happens. And I got one, two, three, four, five successes. So very, very successful. So then I'm going to go down here to the three plus successes. And it says, you save people and extinguish the fire. Draw two bystander cards and gain the rewards. And then remove this anarchy token. So we'll go ahead and remove the token. And we can get rid of these dice. And then I get to draw two bystander cards and receive the rewards for them. So for the first one, I have the business executive. Quiet, I can't see you. I'm on a call here. Can't you see I'm on a call here? The reward listed is none, but I do get her token up at the top. And if I can get two of those, then I get a special card. So then the, the next bystander is the paramedic. Tell me what you need. I'll help you in any way I can. Reward, I heal one damage or refresh one exhausted action token. So I'll do that. That's pretty good. I get one token back. And then again, I have that. So anytime I have two of those symbols, I can trade those in. So I'll go ahead and discard these. I'm going to place these face down underneath here or face up underneath there, and I get to draw a special card. And these are pretty powerful. So this one is Quiet Knight. At the end of any hero's turn, I, to, I can play at the end of any hero's turn to prevent drawing a scheme card in the villain phase, or I can add two dice to a villain or mastermind fight. So these are going to be really handy to have. All right, and that will take care of that as well. So I'll simply discard that off to the side. And then now I have one action remaining that I can use to do something with. So what do I want to do with that? I will, I'm going to do a move action. So I'm going to move one space up and I will end my turn there. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why did you do that as a, anytime you end your turn, a, all the henchmen in there are going to attack you and do damage, but I do have my reasons. So from there, then at the end of the turn, first off, we have to handle that. So I'll have to draw one token for damage and I have I cannot play any yellow cards with that and then I will go ahead and draw two cards to add to my area so I have a surge card and bolster allies then I'm going to draw a scheme twist or a scheme card so with this one I am going to add one henchman to location 21 and I had another bystander token, which I'm out of bystander tokens down here. So then I can move one anywhere on the board to my lo that location. So I'm going to go ahead and move one from there. Again, then I add two to 18. So that'll fill that location up. And finally, I'm going to add one to 24. And then if there was three henchmen in there, then I would move the green villain there, which there is not. Finally, I have rapid healing. Each hero may either heal one damage or draw one ability card. So I'm going to go ahead and heal that damage that I took. And my other uh, hero, Bunker, will draw an ability card. So he got an adhesive foam grenade. Okay, then this will be discarded. And that is the end of legacy's turn so then it's going to move into bunker's turn so with bunker again he is going to start off in his personal life states and with this one it says that i may choose a hero to draw three ability cards and then they will look at those and choose one color to keep and they keep all the cards of that color and then i can choose to move to that location as well so i'm going to go ahead and have legacy do that i'll have him draw three cards and let's see what we got. It's all blue. So I definitely want to take advantage of that so that he can gain those, those blue cards. I think I'm not going to move at all. I think I'll stay there. So from there, then I'm going to go ahead and flip over my card because I don't want to, there's nothing else I necessarily want to do at this point. 
on my personal side. So now I'm going to flip over to my hero side. And I'm going to go ahead and start off by spending an action to move. So I'm going to move down here. Then I will go ahead and spend an action to attack. So I'm going to go ahead and roll three green dice. And I need fours for those. I got two successes. So that'll take care of two of the henchmen there. And then I'm going to go ahead and spend another action to move as, again, to move down here. I will, and I actually defeated two of them, so I get to add those to my justice card instead. And then I will spend another action to attack there. I roll two dice, and my tech is very good. I get a three or better for those. I got two successes, so I will clean out those two there and then my last action i will do a bystander so i'm going to rescue a bystander and reveal a card so with this one i have the movie star would you do you would do great on the big screen sugar let me get you in touch with my agents reward refresh one exhausted action token or draw an ability card i will i'll exhaust a token and then I will go ahead and do that again so that I can rescue another group of bystanders. So this is a frightened citizen. Please don't leave us until the cops arrive. Penalty, you must exhaust one action or end your turn waiting for the police. Well, that worked out because I don't have any actions remaining. And this one I can cash in right away to get a special card. So I'll go ahead and do that. And then the other one just stays with me until I am able to get another another card for that so then a special card's drawn and i have super intuition play when a scheme card is drawn to discard or discard it without effect no other scheme cards are drawn this turn then you may move to any location so that's really handy especially later in the game so i'm going to hold on to that so that will finish off my turn there with bunker so again i'll refresh his tokens i get to draw two cards there aren't any henchman in my space so that's good and then it will go over to the scheme and i have to draw a scheme card all right so this one i have one red henchman in 14 and a bystander token up there i have two yellow in 28 so we're getting close and then one in 30 and then again if there are three henchmen in there then i also will move the villain there which there are not finally then i have to resolve the events which is running out of time if there are three or more mastermind tokens active remove one and advance this scheme track one space so i have one two i do not have a third mastermind token yet so then i don't have to resolve that part but then it says if not place this card next to the scheme track and when three of these cards are next to the track i'll discard them and advance the track by one so i'm going to simply place this down here to keep track of that all right so moving back into legacy's turn now i have some i have a lot of blues so far i have five blue cards which are pretty handy to be able to start working on a villain so i think i'm going to i think i'm going to focus on that so first off i'm going to handle that effect as i get to take a free look so with this one i would add a blue to five which is going to be down here that would not be good i add one to 11 which is going to be down here and then one to 28 which would also not be good. So I'm going to go ahead and discard this one instead of resolving its effect. From there, I don't have anything else that I want to do at this point on my personal side. So I'm going to flip over to my hero side. And then I'm going to go ahead and spend my first action to do a flight. So this one lets me play as a move uh, as an action to move to any location and then I carry one other hero from my location so I'm currently with bunker so I'm going to go ahead and bring bunker with me so we are going to go ahead and fly over here and now that we are in front of glamour I am going to 
I'm going to go ahead and risk it and try to do an attack with her. And I will team up with Bunker so that he can help me out a little bit. He doesn't have a lot of blue cards yet, so that's not going to be a huge thing. But we'll see what we can do here. So first off, I'm going to go ahead and spend all of my blue cards. And each blue card that I spend is going to show a, either a single die or a double die down at the bottom. Each one I spend, I get a die to be added to my area. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six blue dice that I'll gather. So I'll go ahead and pull these out. And I get those as well. I also get my legacy die and... Hmm. Do I want to spend anything else? I think I will spend this one as well. And this one lets me add two additional dice to that. So I'm going to add two there. From there, then, Bunker also has to choose how many cards he's spending or if he's spending any cards to attack with me. And he will spend one just in case. So he will get one die from his section so we'll go ahead and just turn that to its side to represent that he is going to use that and then i can choose the order in which we attack and i am going to go ahead and go first with legacy to see how i can do maybe i can finish her off in one shot now one important thing to point out is that glamour has a couple of special abilities each villain is going to have a defense so hers is voices and visions and if an attacking hero is more more even numbers than odd the attack chases an illusion and glamour suffers no damage so i have to be really careful about what i roll with this attack as it could definitely backfire and i wouldn't be able to do any damage to her in that result so let's see what happens i am looking for at least fours in order to score hits all right so i have one two three four, five, six, and then I have three odds in there as well. So then her counter strike, let me see what we have here, is going to not do anything else major. So I have more odds than evens. So I do attack her straight up and I have enough to eliminate her as she only has six hit points. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. I'm not going to change any of my results as I had a couple of options. I could have played Surge of Strength that would add plus one to each die that I rolled, which would have given me a couple more successes, but I didn't need them. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that. So that will eliminate her. Now we resolve her counter strike, which is misdirection. I'm going to move the attacking hero to the location of the closest hero and then deal that hero two damage. So that is going to keep me at the same location because Bunker is there with me. And he, I would take, or that hero would take two damage. Now Bunker has a special ability and says each time Bunker suffers one or more damage, I'm going to reduce that damage by one and deal one to the attacker. So instead, both of our heroes are just going to take one damage. So each one of us will draw a token. And so for Bunker, his is he cannot use red card or yellow cards. And for Legacy... He draws a two, so he's going to lose two of his action tokens until he heals. Really bad draw, so that's going to hurt as he is going to, he won't be able, he'll only have one action left after this. From there, then, we're going to go ahead and remove Glamour from the, well, not yet. From there, then we, uh, the last thing we do is flip over Glamour's card and resolve the effects of that. So when Glamour is defeated, we get a reward. Attacking heroes may take two rewards, and they must be different rewards. You cannot choose the same one twice. So with that, I am going to... Legacy will take the villain token. So he's going to take that. As Remember, when we, when we spend this at the end, when we're attacking the Mastermind, this is going to give us two successes right away. So that's really good. And then my... Or Bunker will take the other one, and I think we're going to... I think I'm going to draw two special cards and keep one. Now, the one other thing that we have to take care of is the mobile defense platform. So, with this one, anytime we kill or defeat a villain, the power 
the power pack that they carry feeding energy to the mobile defense platform is destroyed, dealing seven damage to the mobile defense platform. So at this point, then that is going to have seven points of damage on it, as that is one of the big things we got to bring down. And then I'll put that up there. Now, the other important thing that I do want to point out is anytime a villain is defeated, the henchmen are weakened and, and disoriented. So at this point on, all we have to do is spend an action. And when we spend an action to attack henchmen, they're all going to be eliminated from that space. So that's going to help defeating them a lot easier. All right, so with Bunker, I'm going to draw two. And I get to keep one of them. So I'm going to take Tactical Strike. So I'll add that to my special area, and then this one will be discarded. And then moving back into Legacy's turn, I will... I'm going to go ahead and spend that last action to attack the henchmen. So that will eliminate the three of those. And I'll add one to my card, as that is another one of the henchmen I'm going after. I will put these back and that will take care of that. So at that point, then my turn is over. I'll go ahead and draw two cards. So I have two more flight cards and I will draw a scheme card. So we have adding a blue to 27 which is, nope, down over on this side. There it is up there. The next one is we're gonna add two blue to location 10, and this is gonna cost, uh, cause our first overflow. So with this one, anytime we have to add an, a henchman to a location that already has three, it will overflow. That henchman will be added to the villain unless that villain has been defeated already, in which case the henchman is simply removed from the game completely. So this one will be removed. And then we'll add one henchman to each location that that location's connected to. So I'll add one here and one down there. Finally, I'm going to add one green henchman to location 20. And then the villain would move there, but he's already there, so he doesn't move. And then finally, with the scheming, if less than three mastermind tokens are active, which we only have two right now, then we're going to add one mastermind token to the location of the active villain, or mastermind. So I'm going to go ahead and add it to the mastermind so he does not move. Otherwise, he would actually do some nasty stuff as well. So that'll take care of that one there. And then it would move over to Bunker's turn. So at this point, I'm going to take a few turns off camera and we'll be back to see how our heroes are doing about mid game. Moving back in after a few rounds, our heroes have been successful in defeating Amistade as well, the second villain. So at that point, we've moved on to the Chapter 2. So during this chapter, things are starting to ramp up a little bit. At the end of each hero's turn, we have to draw two scheme cards. And the second one, we only handle the first effect of it, and then the event only if it affects the Mastermind tokens. And then there's some additional rules for devious traps. And there's also a side quest that is added called the computer glitch, where we have two tokens out. And if we're able to get to those tokens and resolve the effects of them before the end of the game, then we might find something special before when we carry on if it we're playing a campaign. So from there, it's back into Legacy's turn. And I'll go ahead and start off in my personal state. So I'm going to go ahead and look at that scheme card as part of my action and see what we have. So we would add 1 to 12 and a bystander. We'd add 2 to 13, which is not good. And then 1 to 26 and the villain would move there, but he's already there. And then we'd also have the running out of time effect. So I think I'm going to go ahead and discard this one and not resolve it. At the end of his turn, and we'll try our luck and see how things are going to go. So from there, our heroes are going to... I think Legacy will flip over to his hero side. I'm going to spend one action to move first. So I will move here. And I'm going to spend an action to try to fight those bystanders... Or the henchmen there. So I'm going to roll three yellow and my Legacy die. And I'm looking for fives. The tech is his worst. And no successes at all. 
I am going to spend the Surge of Strength though to give me a boost to that. So that'll give me plus one to each one of these, bumping them up a little bit, uh, allowing me to defeat one. And the reason why I wanted to do that was for the Night Patrol. So if I once I defeat I have a henchman of each type, then I can resolve this card and gain the benefits on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then that will clear these and add this to my area. Now I can choose to flip this card at any time to avoid drawing all scheme cards at the end of any hero's turn and then add this card to my victory stack. So that'll be really handy if I don't want to worry about having to deal with scheme cards this turn or in a later turn as well. So that'll take care of that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do another move action to move again. And I'm going to move one, two to the sports center as I have another uh, justice card I wanna handle. So with this one, it says that while at the stadium, I and there's no henchman there, I may exhaust one action to test my mind. I'm gonna roll three dice. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And the mind is green. So I'm gonna roll three green die. I get to add my legacy die as usual. And I need at least two successes. So I need at least two, four or betters. If I can get those, then I'll see what happens. And I did, I got two ones and a five and a six. So I got two successes. Then you, I am able to decipher the puzzle and gain the reward below. Flip this card at any time to remove all henchmen and anarchy tokens from your location. And then I get to add this to the stack. So I'm going to place that next to my card right now since I am not going to spend it yet. And then I get to draw a new justice card. So now I'm looking for five red henchmen. And that is everything for my turn. So I am going to spend this Night Patrol and flip it over so that I do not have to draw and resolve scheme cards. So from there, then it's going to move directly into Bunker's turn. So Bunker is going to go and I will go ahead and start off. I'm going to do that his ability. Oh, and I do get to draw cards for Legacy. So I'm going to go ahead and draw two. I get... Bolster Allies and the Surge of Strength for his part of it. And then I'm going to go ahead and have him, let me make sure, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, so I'm close. So I'm going to go ahead and draw three. I only have two remaining, so I'm going to just draw those two, as I'm going to have to spend an action to, to do that. And it's either going to be a blue or a yellow. So I'm going to go ahead and take, I'm going to have him keep the yellow. I'll discard the blue card. And then Bunker can choose to move to a yellow location if he wants to. And the question is, do I want to move to a yellow location? I don't think so at the moment. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to spend one action to move. And I'll move up. I will spend another action to move. I'll move over here. And then I am going to spend an action to do an Omni Blast. So with this one, I play as an action to defeat all henchmen at your location. So these guys will go away. And I also get to eliminate two henchmen from each adjacent location. So locations that are connected. So two red from there. There's a blue there. And two red from here. Finally, I deal one damage to villains and other heroes on my location. So I have that, and he's not a villain, so I don't uh, he won't take anything. And then remove all bystanders from your location and place an anarchy token. So I have to place a token. Uh, I will place a blue one. And then I have to roll a die, and if I roll an odd, then I add a second one. And I do, so I have a second anarchy token there. I will move, so I'm going to move here, and I will do I will do an ammo drop. So I'm going to go ahead and draw one ability card, and it's satellite intel. So I'll add that to my area, and 
Then the henchmen are going to attack. Again, Bunker's ability lets him soak one damage and deal one back to the enemy. So he will eliminate that guy. And then I get to draw two cards. So I've got another Omni Blast and a Satellite Intel. Then it'll go over to the schemes, and I'm going to go ahead and play Super Intuition. So with this one again, play when a scheme card is drawn and discard it with no effect, and no other scheme cards are drawn this turn. Then you may move to any location. So where do I want to go to? I think I'm going to come down here, because I want to. we want to start hitting on Freight Train and try to get him out of here. All right, so that is the end of my turn as well. And I actually was on this side. So then it'll go into uh, Legacy's turn. So we'll go ahead and refresh this real quick. And with Legacy, I am going to spend my first action to heal and, and refresh. So I'll get to shuffle up my hands. Then I will spend an action to move. I'm going to come in here and we're going to gang up on Fright Train. So with that one, I am going to initiate the combat with, or the attack. So I'll spend an action. Then I'm going to choose my cards. So I have one, two, three, four, and five red dice that I'll get from those. I will also spend a Justice card to add an additional die to that roll. And I'm also going to spend these two as well, or spend this one to add two additional dice, because Freight Train's got a lot of hit points, so I definitely want to try to take advantage and do as much damage as possible to him. So that'll get rid of both of these. And all of those cards, so I'll go ahead and drop those down there. That will give me eight dice plus my one that I always get to roll. And I do have a couple of surges, so I can bump those up a little bit. Now, the important thing with Freight Train is that he does have a henchman on there, so he's actually got 10 hit points right now. And he modifies each attacker's die by minus one, so it's going to make it harder. So normally I'd need threes, but with Freight Train, I'm going to need fours to do damage. So then over to Bunker to also choose what he's going to roll. And he is going to roll, he'll go and spend the two reds. So he's going to get three for that. And he'll go ahead and spend both of the Justice cards as well. So that'll pump him up to five. So hopefully that'll be enough to do it. So let's go ahead and start off. I don't know, do I, do I want to do any more? <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting a little skittish here. So, uh, Tactical Strike. I think I will play Tactical Strike as well. That will give me a total of seven dice with Bunker. So, hopefully that'll be enough. All right. So, first, let's go with Legacy and see how he does. Or when, when we team up, we can choose the order. Actually, I think I'm going to go with Bunker first. So, I'm going to roll seven dice with Bunker first. And... I'm looking for fives. So let's see if we can get some successes here. And I got two. That's not the best. So I'm going to go and have Legacy spend Inspiring Presence. This lets me re-roll or have a hero re-roll his dice. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and see if I can do a little bit better than just two. And I got two again. So let's go again and see if we can do better than two. There's three. So I guess that will be the best I can do. So I'm going to go ahead and drop one there. And then I add two damage to, leg or to uh, Freight Train. And then it's going to be over to... Legacy to do the rest. So he's going to have to do seven damage. So this is going to be, this will be interesting to see if we can pull this off. All right. Come on, Legacy. 
All right, so I'm gonna spend my two surges. That will bump every die up by two points. So I'll spend those. So these will become fours. That's a three and a three. That's a six, five, and three. So I did a total of six damage and there's nothing else that I can add to that to make that any better. All right, so that is six damage. So that brings him up to eight. And then first we have to handle the counter strike. So let me drop eight on there so that we have that. I'll bring this up here so you guys can see. So the counter strike, each, attacks, each attacker suffers two unblockable damage. So I'll go ahead and go with legacy first and handle that. And see what we pull. So I have no yellows can be used or ands. And I lose an action. So I gotta place an action on there. Then bunker, bunker is going to counter that with his ability. And he does one additional damage, so that will actually defeat Freight Train, but he is going to take that damage, and so he is going to lose an action token. And then otherwise, Legacy wouldn't have been able, would have been, uh, would have moved and healed one damage. If that wouldn't work, so let's just say, because this does say unblockable damage, so I don't know how that works per se with Bunker's ability. But let's go ahead and say that he wasn't able to do that. I do have this ambush card which says that I can play when a villain is moving and you can move to that villain's location and deal one damage to them and then the villain does not move. So I could choose to do that instead and that would probably finish him off as well. So that will defeat Freight Train. And again, we get to choose our rewards on, on that. So with... Legacy, I will go ahead and take that token. And then with Bunker, I think I'm going to remove all of the red anarchy tokens. So there's three of them there. And then I get to add them to the purple pool. So those become wild so I can use those when I need to place an anarchy token. So that'll help with that. All right, so we've gotten all of our villains down, and that means that there's going to be some bad stuff that happens from here. So first off, with that, now that we've defeated our third villain, we do another seven damage to the mobile platform, which currently has 14 damage on it, because we defeated the first two. So that is going to do 21, that'll be 21 damage total, and any damage that is in excess to the mobile defense platform will go on to Baron Blade. So he is going to take one damage from that. And then we have to roll to determine what happens with the mobile the defense platform. So with this one, it's going to crash to the ground. I discard the platform from play and roll a die. So let's see what happens. We'll go ahead and roll Legacy's die. Maybe that'll, that'll help us a little bit. It's a six. So the Baron transfers auxiliary power to the Terra Lunar Implosion Beam and advance the track by one space. Okay, and so then the platform has been eliminated, so we just need to take the Baron out at this point. And then this will also be removed, and we can also remove Freight Train. Okay, so at this point, the Baron has a number of hit points equal to the number of heroes plus four. So we're playing with two heroes, so he has six hit points, so he has five remaining. So we just need to get in there and initiate a combat as we have the three villain tokens. That'll do six damage to him alone. So that is a great thing. So other than that, we do have to advance this again as it says that at the bottom here, we do not advance until we defeat the three villains or the mastermind track reaches two, which it has, or reaches eight. It has not reached eight yet. But we did defeat the three villains. So the chapter three is a terrible legacy. Villain phase effects, the active hero draws his two ability cards, and then we draw two scheme cards and perform all the steps and, and events on both of them. Fools, you think you've won? 
they yet to see the full scope of my revenge, a far greater legacy. Okay, so with this one, we have to resolve two events now. And we do have one action remaining with legacy to go. So I think I am going to, I think I'm going to spend that to heal. And that'll let me heal two damage. Or I can't do that right now as he is in his hero form. I'll have to wait until next turn to be able to do that. But I could do bolster allies. This one let me, uh, all heroes, including you, heal one damage or draw one ability card. So I think I'm going to do that instead. So I'm going to heal one damage. That'll get rid of that. And that'll also get rid of Bunker's abil uh, token as we're both going to heal. So now I've just got the one hit point on me and I have one action remaining which I spent to do that. So that is it for Legacy's turn. So I'll go ahead and flip these back over and I definitely need some cards. So let's draw two. We have Surge of Strength and Bolster Allies. Then we have two schemes to handle unless I have any other cards which I don't at the moment at this point so we're gonna have to resolve and it's the justice rules the knights no henchmen are placed and no villains move draw no more scheme cards this was huge all right that was awesome all right so it is over to bunker to go and bunker is going to Unfortunately, there's no way he can get Legacy over there because we really need to do a team up so that we can take care of the Baron. So first off, I'm going to go ahead and do his ability as usual. And that'll have Legacy draw three cards. That might help. One, two, three. And we have two greens and a red. So I'm going to have him take the red card and the greens will be discarded and that is going to let me move to a red space. So I'm going to go ahead and move here. I will, Ooh, well, I think I will actually move here instead. I'll spend an action to attack the villain there, so that'll or the henchman there. That'll eliminate them as we have defeated the villain. And then let me see about that side quest. So what, how does that work? That is place... Uh, so I think with those, I just have to spend an action to pick them up. Oop, wrong guy. Let's do this one up here. So I get to pick that up. And then I will... Flip over to Bunker's side. I'm going to play Satellite. And this one lets me move to a location with an Anarchy or Mastermind token. So I will move here. I'll play one to use Adhesive Foam Grenade. This one lets me play an action to remove an Anarchy or Mastermind token from your location. So I'll go ahead and remove that and place that down here. I think that's pretty much all I can do at this point. So I'm going to spend that one to drop ammo and that'll let me draw one card. So I'll place that over there. And that is the end of his turn. So we have to draw two schemes. We have Crime Wave. We have two green on 15. I have two blue on 29 and a yellow on 13. Okay, and then place an anarchy token on one red location with three henchmen. Okay, so I will do that. Place that there. So that's the first card and the second card is going to be that I will do one onto 25. So that's going to cause an overrun, which means that this guy is just going to be discarded. And then we add one here, which will discard another one from the game and one here. And then it is going to have a place a mastermind, which will move the mastermind down here. So that's not good. Then I have two 
It'll be placed into 12. I have a yellow that'll go into three. And then finally a personal task. So draw and activate a personal task. So that'll cover up that, which means that I cannot use that at this point until I resolve that personal objective. All right, so that is the second card. And so it's going to move into Legacy's turn now. And then I get to draw two cards at the end of that. Or did I? No, I didn't. Okay, so I'll get two cards for that. And it is over to Legacy. So the big thing now, I just need to get the two of us over to the Baron. So I have a flight that would let me do that. But I got to be able to get to Bunker Space in order to be able to pull that off. So... I'll spend an action to move. So let's see, I can move up here. And I can, if I spend another action, I can move again, stop here, and I can do a train action to see if I can get some cards. And I got a second flight. Unfortunately, that is not going to be enough at the moment. So what else do I want to do? I will hmm. I'll do another move that's going to move me into here and then I'll do an attack on henchmen to clear those those three henchmen there adding those to that. Okay. So that will finish off his turn. I get to draw two cards. And then I have two schemes to handle. So the first one I add one guy to 17, which I'm out of yellow henchmen. So then I have to add an anarchy token to that and a mastermind token, and that'll move him. So he's just moving all over the place. And then he also adds, he has wicked schemes, roll a die each time the villain moves and on an odd number, place a mastermind token all right, so that's for that. Okay, then we have two reds. They're going to be down into 22. And finally, a green into 12. 12. It's up here. On the move, each hero may move up to three locations. So let's go one, two, three. And then I will do one... two, three. Okay, and then the second card is a Justice Rules the Knight, so no other effects. So that'll actually work out pretty nicely, and it is back over to Bunker's turn to go. I am going to trigger his ability, so Legacy will draw. He has two cards remaining. One of them is a yellow, so I have him hold on to the yellow, discarding the green which will allow me to move to a yellow location. And then I'm going to flip over to my hero side. And we're going to attack. We're going to team up and attack the Baron. So we're just going to go ahead and spend our three there. And I can spend a card to initiate that combat. And that'll be enough to defeat the Baron. Now, with the Baron, it is a one time only. So if we would have had to roll dice and we were unsuccessful, he would have been able to activate his Terra Lunar suction beam massive thing and bring the moon down and destroy us all. So that was interesting. But we had the tokens we needed. We had the three villains to be able to kill him outright. So from there, then, we would resolve the end of the stage effects, so depending upon our victory or defeat, 
and the rewards that we would get. So with the regular victory, we would open up reward packet one. If we were able to get the computer glitches, we'd also get to open up the bonus reward packets. And that's important as this is going to be a campaign game where you're going to be able to uh, build up your heroes a little bit. So probably being able to change out their deck of cards or maybe including additional cards or more powerful cards, and then being able to add other effects in there as the campaign goes on. Of course, this is just speculation as I have not had an opportunity to see any of those additional changes, but that's just what I'm kind of figuring will be part of it. Well, I hope you found this video helpful in deciding whether or not this is one you want to back on Kickstarter. If you have any questions or comments, leave those in the comments section below and I'll do my best to answer them, or swing by the Kickstarter's main page and drop any questions you have there as well. I'm sure the creators would love to hear from you and are more than happy to answer any questions you have. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my videos and leave me feedback on them. I do really appreciate it and I take into account everything you say to make the best possible videos. Until next time, I'll see you later.